I got to say, New Amsterdam Radio is brought to you part by Anchor FM. Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? You see, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? And most importantly, I don't want to deal with cables and wires and all those things. You see, the answer to every single one of these questions is pretty simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And you can use your phone, which is pretty awesome. Now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you ever wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. New Amsterdam Radio starts now. Hello, everyone. Flobo Voice here, as always. I need to know. I want to know. I desire to know. How are you doing during this holiday season, this very unique holiday season? How has your creative projects ramped up? Have they cooled down? Uh, What are you working on? Please let me know as we hit another edition of New Amsterdam Radio. You can contact me uh, at New Amsterdam on Instagram or at New Under score Amsterdam on Instagram. Today's guest is one that's kind of making inroads here in Southern California. For those of you who don't know, when it comes to the wedding vendor space, there is no area, battleground, theater as large as Southern California. And it is a challenge to start a business in any time and in any environment. But in Southern California, it's a whole nother level. My guest, Alicia De La Cruz, owns De La Planning. She is also the lead planner for De La Planning, and she has made some inroads as far as building her brand and going out and getting it, the proverbial it. And I want to sit down with her to see what her strategy looked like, what was her exciting incident, all that good stuff. So we're going to Sit down with her in just a moment. Just want to say, if you like interviews just like this one here on New Amsterdam Radio, make sure you become a member of the Boisterous Crew over at patreon.com slash Lobo Voice. Uh, you get to unlock full-length interviews from New Amsterdam Radio, bonus content, even some creative projects that don't make it onto YouTube or the internet wholesale. So check it out. Boisterous crew, become a member at patreon.com slash global voice. And without further ado, here is my talk with De La Planning owner, Alicia De La Cruz. Welcome back to New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creatives. And it's I, the mayor, Flobo Boys, but I'm not alone. I'm being joined, and I have a special intro here because I love my intros. Let's see. For those of you who do not know, I am a working member of the wedding industry, and some wedding gigs can be kind of lame. But I will say one of my all-time favorite weddings was planned by my guest, the owner of De La Plena, Alicia De La Cruz. How you doing? Oh, hello. How do I follow that? That was amazing. <laughs> It's only true. It's it's true that I always. It's weird how like we sit back and we talk about like the good weddings or the ones that stick in your mind. And you're like, ah, oh, yes, Amadi Cruz. I remember <laughs> like it was yesterday. Uh, fantastic. No, well, I, and that was that was the first time we actually worked together. Um, and you're a wedding planner, and I know on the DJ side, they can be kind of like you know rolling the dice like well what's my vendor team gonna look like how's it like for you when you have so many different weddings and so many different personalities at a, a wedding day like how does that feel yeah no that's a great point and so true i mean every wedding's so different every vendor team is so different as the planner sometimes i'm you know selecting that team which obviously i'm going into that with the most like comfort level because i know who i'm working with but sometimes a lot of the vendors are booked already um, so I'm kind of going in blind, like you said. I'm not sure what that DJ is going to be like. or right. <laughs> um, So you kind of are rolling the dice, but that's part of why I love it too because I just love all types of people. I love, you know, connecting, networking, and I think that it's kind of fun to go in and be like, okay, like let's make it work, like no matter the personality and just kind of adapt as you go. Um, but I was really lucky on that wedding because obviously I worked with you and it was amazing. And yeah. one of my favorites too, they danced like, all night long it was yeah it was a packed dance floor 
I was totally saying it was all about it was about me. I could totally be egotistical about it, but uh, yeah, they were a good crowd. Uh, you are the owner of Delap Planning, which is a company that you own, obviously. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's let's talk about that because there are a lot of wedding planners, a lot of people in this industry, especially in Southern California. It's the most popular area in the country to get married. Uh, deciding to go out on your own, like, must have been. Crazy, exciting, fun, nerve-wracking. What was your experience by making the jump, deciding to go into work for yourself? Yes, it was all of those things you just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, most definitely. I would say, too, um, so I did work as an assistant with another planner before I decided to jump into my own uh, business, which was a big decision. Honestly, I thought about it for probably a couple years before I actually did it. Uh, which is a long time. I was in, you know, another corporate job doing weddings on the side, and I was too scared to make the jump. Um, but when I finally did, it's kind of like that where people say you just have to get started. Like yeah. I just had to get started, and I just needed to start somewhere. Um, and it was super nerve wracking, um, a little bit scary, but I've been lucky, and it's been, you know, going well. But I mean, it, every every jump like that kind of has its. Um, struggles challenges obviously we've all had challenges with corona i'm sure that'll come up <laughs> right what was the, the the main reason like for me i i was part of a bigger dj company i'm not sure if you know but i was in the big i was in a multi-op that's what they call it and i was one of the guys on the bench or the second string or whatever and i had left because to, to their credit they had grown so large and good for them that it was hard to maintain quality control some djs were great some djs were not so great I decided to control the brand, but I mean, it's very, it's nothing wrong with being a secondary planner or tertiary planner, but you decided mm -hmm. to go in for yourself. What was the actual reason for that? Yes. I did know that you were part of another DJ company because I did my research too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure I'm not crazy. No. <laughs> but um, you're right. Like I totally could have tried to work with another planner, but I think for me, I've always kind of known that it never made sense to me, like build towards someone else's empire or like work for another person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love working with people, but I think personally, I've always just kind of wanted to create my own empire, be my own boss, kind of be able to do things um, with all, you know, my decision making um, and be able to grow my own team and be able to help others and build others up because I'm really big about community and like building others up and helping, you know, other girls that want to be planners and things like that. Um, so I think that if I was a part of a larger team, I would have less um, flexibility to do those things. Oh, absolutely. Did, yeah. did your family or network, were they all about it with this interpretation? Cause I, I've seen that story play in different ways with that. The, the mom and dad, the uncles and aunts, <laughs> the get a real job versus go for it. Like how do they land? Yeah. Um, you know, my family is super supportive. They kind of just like, are like, go for whatever you want to do. Like I went to college and they didn't even like really push me to go to college. I wanted to go to college, yeah. um, to kind of figure out where I wanted to land and things. So they're super supportive in that aspect. Um, they still kind of are confused, I think by like what I'm doing. Like sometimes my dad is like, do you have a website? And I'm like, yes, of course I have a website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we don't really have many business owners in our family. So I think that the confusion comes behind, like, how much do I do on my own? Like, am I doing my own marketing? Am I doing my own accounting? And like, yeah. how much am I outsourcing? So there's a bit of confusion, but definitely a lot of support. Support is definitely one of the things that we, we look for, even though sometimes we may, we may get it or may not get it. Uh, for me, going into my own business as a DJ, all my family is working class and, and, and they're pure people of color. And there's always like this this desire to have a good job. Get yourself a good job. And and so when I said, all right, I think I'm going to be my own thing, it was almost like a foreign concept. Like, well, who's your boss? <laughs> like, how are you going to get paid? And it was just... So I wouldn't say that it was like a lack of support, but for me personally, it was kind of like educating people that there is a track to do all the things that you think a good job can provide, whereas you are your own boss, you can kick your own butt if you're slacking, <laughs> right? No, well, I mean, that, I kind of feel like mine, my situation is very similar to that, but I put that pressure on myself. So sure. I kind of was like, oh, you have to go into corporate, you have to build the corporate, like go up the corporate ladder, become a CEO. You know, I had all of these, expectations on myself of what success like I thought success would be mm -hmm. and so I think that's what dragged out me starting my business for so long because I didn't know what that 
I had never seen really a successful business owner in my group of friends or in my close knit family. So I was kind of like in the back of my head, like, oh, I won't be successful until I'm like a CEO of a company or do X, Y, Z. Um, So that was kind of like an internal struggle for me. Do you consider yourself successful now or on the path of success? Um, I think I'm definitely on the path of being successful. Um, I've been super lucky to be, you know, have early successes in my business. I'm still super new, um, but I've, you know, done some great things and I definitely see that continuing. Yeah, that's that, that, that whole, people say that success can be chasing the dragon, but it's really Mm -hmm. cool that you feel like you're on that path because there's always days I have like, yeah, I got it, (laughs) you know? so yeah, is... there's days where I'm like, oh gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, who trusted me with this? Oh, me, I did. Oh, oh yeah, I'm like, oh wait, no, I, I made this decision. <laughs> yeah, I made this decision. Uh, it is, as of now, the end of 2020, uh, 2020, the shortest and the longest year ever, depending on how you look at it, uh, mm-hmm. with the pandemic and all that. And, and I know it's an understatement to ask, has this changed your business? But I don't want to the actual scale. Like, I mean, how is it for you just understanding, I think it was like an automatic shutdown, but things were shutting down different parts of the country, seeing parts open up faster than others. Like what has been the biggest change to your business? Um, yes, so much change. I think um, as we all kind of like got updates along the way, obviously things just kept changing for my business. So from postponements to different types of plans for weddings, I think weddings overall are going to look really different for a really long time. Um, I never thought I would read a government website as much as I have been reading the government website. (laughs) And like the CDC reports and all of this, I'm like, you know, as a wedding planner, you don't think that that's going to be part of your your job. But here I am um, trying to educate myself on, you know, safe protocols of just people sitting at ceremony. Um, So yeah, it's definitely changed a lot. And in terms of like volume, you know, 2021, I'm hoping... um, things will be a little bit better and we can kind of move forward with those postponed weddings. Um, But I think it's giving me a lot of time in my business, like on the back end too, to kind of, you know, do try different things, market differently. I'm doing like email marketing now and kind of gave myself time to do things other than like be at weddings, which I love both, but we need time in general. So I just, uh, your uh, prediction or so, are we thinking, I don't know, the vaccine is all happening, but like, are we thinking oh. towards normalcy in that way? Because there's some, there's some people that have like a, a backlog, like, oh man, 2020s is overlapping 2021. There's a date conflict. Like, I mean, do you think it's going to take years to get sorted out or is it one of those things where we we'll all just come into place and, and make that happen? Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I'm like, I've stopped making predictions. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I feel like it's so funny because at the beginning, you know, when we were talking about weddings, it was like, let's postpone six months or let's postpone one year. And now I'm almost coming back to those one year conversations with like my March couples where it's like, okay, you know, it's been we postponed a year, but it still might not be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So in terms of knowing like what all of 2021 will look like with like the vaccine and everything, I do think that there will be certain things that won't go away now that we've kind of started them. Um, in terms of like sanitation and certain protocols that they've created. Um, I just don't, I don't think weddings will be a hundred percent ever exactly how they were. I think that things will adjust a bit, but I do have hope that they're going to become a little bit more like they were like dance floors would be great. Let's have dance. Floors. <laughs> yes, please. Bring <laughs> dance floors. Please bring back dance floors. Um, so we can have the best wedding ever again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really, I'm like, I don't know the prediction. Do you have any, ideas or well i I feel like it's every county which is kind of i understand why but i understand is also kind of frustrating uh seeing different counties and states respond to things so if things doesn't change in los angeles county which as of this recording there's like a cap on how many people can do it and some venues don't allow dancing but like in orange county is a little bit more lax um i personally lost a lot of business to arizona uh and, and basically arizona and airbnb Essentially, people decide I'm going to do a private house and invite anyone anyway, or I'm going to go to Arizona or Nevada or Nevada, as they say, and do my wedding there. I hope it levels out. I hope laziness takes hold. People go, no, I want to do a wedding in my hometown, and then I'll be fine. But that's been the most frustrating thing for me on my end, uh, 2020, for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. 
Yeah. So we, you mentioned on the back end, you've done more email marketing for your business. Is there anything like pro tips you've learned on, on doing, on focusing on the structure of your business during this down period? Um, I mean, I feel like I could have de- definitely done more with my time. Who doesn't feel that way in 2020? I'm like, it's been a balance for me. I've been working on like self care and doing things other than, you know, my business, but also working on the back end. Um, in terms of pro tips, I think just taking education courses, like mm-hmm. from other professionals in the, in that specific, um, like that are great at that. So like Facebook ads or Instagram ads or email marketing, like, yes, I would love to say I can teach myself everything. Um, but I think supporting other small businesses and learning from other people who have really like honed in on that craft um, has been great. I've done quite a few like online courses. Well, everything's online right now, but like right. virtual <laughs> virtual courses and things to kind of better my education that can help me long term. Um, so I think like a tip, I guess it's not like a, a a crazy tip, but like would definitely be to look into what virtual courses are out there um, where you can support someone else's business, but also learn something for your own. Oh yeah. That's, that's a pro tip. That counts. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's not that pro tip, but you know, I'm learning something. Uh, Also, (laughs) I have actually read an article from the Voyage LA, which you appeared in uh, this year, um, which is entitled uh, meet Alicia Della Cruz of Della Planning. So if you are on the internet, make sure you check that out. Um, well, I want to read this this quote that I thought was pretty interesting. It's, you Uh-oh. say, "quote <laughs> You wrote it, or you no, said it. Not, I don't it's, remember. It's, it's not like gotcha journalism. Like, no, no, I never go some pizza, it. Alicia. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Quote: Throughout the years, my support circle has continued to grow, and I believe that has come in return of me supporting others as well. I will always believe in community over competition because, at the end of the day, lifting another." Another thing another up goes past the importance of business. Now, you mentioned your circle before, and you also mentioned that you had a mentor when you started. Uh, any plans of you shifting that and becoming the mentor yourself to mentees uh, mm-hmm. with uh, in a more formal capacity as you grow your business? That's a great question. And I do remember that quote now that you say it. <laughs> um, you're correct. I did say that. Um, I definitely have thought about it. I definitely would love to. Uh, that's kind of a more of a long term goal for me, I think. Um, right now, I'm definitely focused on my business and kind of trying to like, hone in on, you know, being the best of what I can do before I bring in um, maybe mentees or anything like that. Sure. Um, but I definitely would love, love, love. I did start workshops. Uh, vendor workshops this year at the beginning of the year where oh, nice. I, um, yeah, but then Corona happened. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did have my first one in February before the shutdown where essentially a lot of vendors got together and it's like networking and education piece. So I brought in a speaker to, um, you know, each workshop would be a different topic and then we would also be able to network. So um, I think moving forward, whether I'm a facilitator for that education or whether I am the educator, I definitely see that, you know, on my, in my path because I just I love helping others. And I get a lot of DMs from like, you know, people in high school or girls that are like, how did you do this? Or, you know, how to become a wedding planner. And I, I just love talking to them about it because every everyone's story is different. That's cool that it like warms your hearts, but I'd be like, who is in my DMs? You know, hit me up. <laughs> Because it's, it's a weird thing because, you know, it's, 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 it takes a lot to shoot that shot. But the other times, yeah. if you're busy with a billion things, maybe I need to get better at this. When someone asks for advice, I'm kind of like, what do you specifically need advice for? Because it's just so much in my brain. You know what I mean? Like, if, imagine if I graduated college and someone's like, how do you pass third grade? I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> what do you need help with right now? So I mean, maybe that's a resolution for myself to get better at the, men- the mentors, the mentor role. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true, though, because at first, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm still new in business. So when I got that first DM, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like. You're asking me? Like, are you sure? (laughs) It kind of is like that imposter syndrome of being like, oh my gosh, like, should I answer you? Um, But I think it's just more, yeah, I thought of it like, it's just talking to people, right? Like if you meet someone and they were talking to you and asking you about how you got there or what you're doing, um, I think conversations can never hurt. And, you know, I might take something away from them. So I definitely try my best to respond to those. Oh, that's great. That's, I probably get on that. <clears throat> uh, you, you had mentioned earlier about self care. Uh, I know with 2020, everyone's mental state has been challenged at the very least. How do you how do you plan for self care? What do you do for self care? Like, what's the things you realize about self care? What is uh, your formula when it comes to that? Yeah, um, I mean, 
I used to be a bit of, I guess you could say, like, workaholic, people would say. I'm, like, quoting it. No one can see me. But <laughs> um, workaholic. I just, I love working and I love what I do. So I never really considered it, like, oh, my gosh, I'm working too much or I'm working so much. But my friends and family would remind me, like, you need to take breaks and, like, you need to do things that you like to do. And I think, like, the lockdown, you know, kind of put that more into perspective for me. Um, and just doing things that, like, bring a little bit of joy, whether it's going for a walk and, like, being outside for an hour or, you know, working out or having wine or eating chocolate. Like, right, right. <laughs> all of these things are things that I love to do. Um, reading, I got back into reading. I hadn't read in a really long time. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? Like, these, this is something that like, I should make a time for. Um and one thing that I did was, since I am so focused on work, I put the self care time in my calendar. I do that too. <laughs> so like, I plan fun. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's on my calendar, like that has to happen, right? So I think that really helped me. Like it helped. Like overall, this year, like put things into perspective a bit for me. And everyone, I feel like we all maybe struggle with like work life balance, but you can do little things every day to like get better at it, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm still definitely trying to get on that perfect work life balance path for sure. Uh, just curious, how long is a self care session in your calendar? An hour, two hours, a day? Um, I would say it's like at least 30, 30 minutes would be like the least amount. But if I have like a pretty light day, then probably like an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. That, that's doable. Yeah. I yeah. thought like scheduling the quarter hours, like, and fun is down. Pencil's over. Let's oh, over. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 2021 is on the horizon, and we, you know, we're saying we're hoping the business comes back. Um, what are you looking forward to the most as far as your work-life balance, as far as the brand building, as far as getting back to work? Like, what does 2021 look like for daily planning? Oh, my gosh. Like, ideally, if we're not in this situation, are we talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever you want. It's, it's like the secret. Manifest it and it will happen. Yeah, no, definitely. Let's manifest it. Okay. It looks like back to weddings with dance floors. Um okay. Kind of just continuing to grow my business and my brand overall. I'm hoping to add people to my team. So have like another lead planner um, and really be able to do more volume next year. Just because with all the weddings that move from 2020 to 2021, um, I think it, if things go back, it will be a really big um, year for the wedding industry in terms of how many weddings we'll all have. So that is definitely exciting to me because I miss being at weddings so much. Um, and then also trying to maybe focus on other other goals I have, like maybe starting a podcast or um, maybe starting the education piece, bringing back my vendor workshops. Um, all of those things are really exciting to me. But I, I'm more so like I like to plan for the future, but I, I will switch plans depending on how the world is going. I'm very, right. Right. So I'm like, I will manifest, but also I'm very logical. So. Fair enough. That's all Fair you can enough. ask for. <laughs> yes. uh, so Alicia, I want to thank you so much for being on this edition of New Amsterdam Radio. Now, I know listening to this podcast, you're going to have a slew of new fans. Where can they follow you online, social media, if they want to book you even here in Southern California? Yes, um, I am on Instagram at Della Planning. So it's D-E-L-A Planning. Um, Della is a part of my last name, fun fact. Um, and then my website is DellaPlanning.com. If you want to inquire, you can inquire on my website or you can go on my Instagram and DM me. I'm also on Facebook. And I think that's it. <laughs> the brand is consistent, which I love. <laughs> yes, yes. It's all pretty much Della Planning, yes. always a great time sitting and talking with creatives and entrepreneurs and those that have the spirit and Alicia has that space. Make sure you follow her, as she mentioned, over at De La Planning. That's D-E-L-A Planning on social media. And if you're in Southern California, I'm sure she is available for bookings because I can tell you firsthand as a DJ for one or two of her events, she does an amazing job. That does it for me on this edition of New Amsterdam Radio. New Amsterdam Radio is part of the New Amsterdam Network, which blows my mind to say that I've Built a network of content digitally over a pandemic. But learn more about this show 
and all the other shows over at newamsterdam.com. That's K-N-E-W Amsterdam.com. And until next time, as always, the city is yours. <laughs>